I present to you the rafter square, commonly called the speed square, but let's call it what it is. It is a rafter square. After all, it is designed for use by roofers who cut rafters. Yeah, whether they be hips, valleys or commons. A really useful square because it can do angles. Oh, I wonder how you do that. Well, I had a rafter square as of last week, but I couldn't find it, so I ordered this one which I found on sea discount for four euros. <laughs> That's ridiculously cheap. Oh, what the hell, I'll buy it anyway. So it was four euros plus postage, about nine euros all in all. Well, these things are all over the internet. They're on Amazon and various other outlets. So it's easy to get hold of. And I'll leave a link in the description down below. Probably an Amazon link, I imagine. And uh, so far, I'm pleasantly surprised with it. I've got a couple of little things I'm not so happy about, but there again, it's four euros. It's solid, it's aluminium. It's obviously been made from a long extrusion, which has been sliced, 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 sliced. Um, not probably that way. <laughs> and it's got all the uh, uh, markings on. Don't know how long they last, because they're not actually uh, pressed in. They're just printed on, so that might be an issue. Whereas the Swanson ones were like pressed into the, well, pressed or moulded into the actual square itself. Now, the first thing I want to do is just test it. Is this square actually square? Hmm, so that'd be my first little test I'm going to do. But also, there's a couple of other little issues I found with it. They're only minor, to be honest, and easy to get over if you really wanted to. But it's quite good because it's got, um, you've got internal markings here. You've got scribe uh, notches there as well. You've got printed on the back here is all your pictures for your roof. I have you, so you can work out your angles. Um, a lot of that stuff I, I generally don't use. When you work on the roof long enough, when I have, um, it's, it, it's all pretty much, it comes second nature to you, you just do it, you know what I mean? It's, it's just one of them things. But so, yeah, but suddenly learning, it's great. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you down to my board and we're going to do our first little test, which is the obvious one. Let's see if the flipping thing is square. Because for that sort of money, you could, you know, it, you might uh, think maybe it ain't so good as, um, well, as they portray it to be. So I've got my pencil, and what we're going to do is we're going to run a line, a square, we should be a square line here. So I've got the square pressed up against the edge and we're going to draw one line through here, like so. So we have a line, yeah? Now that line should be 90 degrees here. That should be 90 degrees. Okay, it's upside down. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to place the square in the opposite direction. Now you can do this with any square, it don't have to be just a hoover square. Any square, whether it be your combination square or a uh, carpenter square, doesn't matter. We're going to line up. I'm lining up against it, it looks spot on if you ask me. Absolutely spot on. So I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite happy at that. But let's draw a line anyway and just see whether or not it strays. Just down the side of it, so I'll make sure... Yeah, I'd say it's pretty darn good. Yeah, that's okay. That's not bad at all. My line's thicker at this end of the other end, though, right? But yeah. So I'm, I'm satisfied that that is actually a square square. <laughs> but what else can you do with these things? Well, there's a few things you can do with them. Obviously, the, you can cut a roof with them. Not actually, not actually cut a roof with them, but, you know, do all your markings, what have you. Um, because you can find your angles. And there are calculations you can do using this section in the middle here for your um, common cuts or hip and valley cuts. So you can use either, either scale here, but not, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to do another video on that actually doing rafter cuts. You know, whether you're doing bird mouth from the end of your, uh, your rafters or when you're doing hips or valleys. But for now, let's just do the basics. Now, to use one of these rafter squares, if you're going to use it, you know, for actually setting the angles in your rafter, let's for, say for instance, you've marked a line here 90 degrees along your uh, rafter, and you want a 15 millimeter angle on the end of your rafter. You've got your 15 millimeter here. That becomes your pivot point here, just here. So we're up to you put it up to your line. You put a clamp on there if you like, and then you pivot yeah, as, as a stop. It's a little bit of wood or leave a pin in there just as a stop if you really must, but you don't generally need to. And then you move this out until here where it says 15 degrees. Let's bring you a little bit closer, shall we? I think so. Um, and 50, there goes my computer. Yeah, 15 degrees. 
at that point there. So now it's 15 degrees on this edge. And that means it will be 15 degrees here. So when I want to cut my rafter, I'll cut it to this line at 15 degrees. Really easy. So you can do it on any angle, right up to, you know, 75, 65, what have you, right up to, nine, you know, the opposite direction. So this makes it really, really easy to cut um, your angle cuts on your rafters. Works really, really well. Another nice thing about these uh, rafter squares, and this one in particular, is that it has a scribe. Now on the larger versions of this, like the 12 inch, the 300 mil version, this scribe goes all the way along. Almost. So that makes it gives you more, um, well, yeah, long, at least double the length of that. That's quite short. That goes up to 70 mil uh, on this one. But it's quite handy. Now, what would you use that for? Well, if I bring you here on the end here, so you can see a little bit better. There you go. Um, if I wanted a, uh, let's say, for instance, 35 millimeter scribe, I would place that in there like so, my pencil into that slot, and then I'd push the square along like so. I can equal in, go five mil the other way if I want. So now I've got two lines next to each other. And now I've got three lines next to each other, all separated by five millimetres. Now this is really, really, really handy. As you can see there, you've got five lines there. One, two, three, four, five, all separated by five millimetres each. So you can see the uses here. Um, I quite like it. It's a useful little square, and this particular one was cheap. Now, my main gripe with it, one is that the uh, markings are printed on, not pressed in. But there again, that was four euros, so what can I say? Don't, don't get me wrong, it was on special offer, so it wasn't their normal price, so it might be 15. I've seen these usually around 15 to 20 euros. Even then, it's cheap. Because it's a very useful square. Now, I'm going to be using this in my workshop, so that's not going to get worn any, any time soon, do you know what I mean? But if you're chucking this in your tool bag or your toolbox, what have you, the likelihood is going to get scratched and marked, and you might end up losing some of these uh, markings uh, in time. But my, one of my biggest gripes with them, uh, it shouldn't really be a gripe, is the, <laughs> is the fact that this particular thing has been. Uh, it's from an extrusion. So the, I imagine it was an extrusion with extru, extru, an extrusion with two uh, of these angled pieces, these stop pieces here, one there, maybe one up there. And when they cut it, they cut it that way, then that way, then that way, then that way, and that way. That's what I imagine before that was, you know, all the other stuff was put on there. Doing that, what they've done is they've cut this with a tungsten carbide saw blade on this edge. Now if I run my finger along there, it's not smooth. If I put my microphone near it, let's just do that, excuse me. I'll put my microphone there, and if you listen to this, you can probably hear it sounds a little bit bumpy. And the same on this face here, this one's worse actually. Which is a bit of a pet hate. Uh, um, the reason why is when you're using anything like this with a pencil, you're gonna let me just put my microphone back before I drop it. Um, when you use anything like that with a pencil, what you do is you end up wearing the side of your pencil and you put pencil dust over your workpiece. I know it doesn't matter if you're on site and stuff like that, and you're, you might be using a different kind of pencil anyway, although these pencils are perfect for that job. So, um, as you can see, there you'd literally be sanding <laughs> for, or rasping the side of your pencil lead, which you don't, well, it has actually done it. I can see, you might not be able to see it on there, but it has actually flattened the side of my pencil lead. Well, that makes it weak. So if you're doing loads of joy, uh, marks, you're going to be losing like three or four mil your pencil lead every time you're going to be using it after a few, you know, after a few marks. So, and if I, if I run my finger across here, I imagine, I'll oh, say as well, as you can see, that, that, that to me is a bit nutty. That's a bit silly. You shouldn't really be doing that. Um, that needs to be smooth. Saying that, I could get a, a diamond oil stone and I could flatten it off smooth. There and there. But on the whole, I think 
it's a good tool. It's a very useful tool. Now another little trick you can do with it, it's quite handy. Cut, um, let me just bring you a bit up a little bit here. Do excuse. I'm sorry about all the moving about, make you dizzy. So let's bring it onto the edge here, right? So let's say for instance, maybe you can get these a bit bigger than this as well, you can get, you can get up to 300 mil sort of 12 inch versions of these uh, speed squares. These things are brilliant for another purpose. If you want to cut, 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 cut squarely on the end of a joist, or even here, um, you can get a good start with one of these squares, even as a panel, because once you get started, you'll carry on going relatively straight. But if you want to just, you haven't got a chop saw where you want it to be, but you've got your skill saw, such as this one here, and you want it to be, um, square on the end of your workpiece, all you've got to do is you place that on the edge or where you want your cut to be, or a line for where your cut's going to be. Well, you'd use your saw, you place your saw wherever you want it to go, wouldn't you? And then you place up against it, and then you can cut through your piece of wood, your rafter, your joist, or whatever it might be, with your skill saw using the square, and you will get a square cut pretty much every single time. Now, if it's a narrow piece of wood, do it from that direction so you can get your hand on it and you can squeeze. It's easier to pull, you see, and squeeze it than it is to try and push it. So that's even better. But also, if it's a narrower piece of timber, the end of the square protracts over the uh, protrudes, sorry, over the end of the uh, workpiece. Um, and then you can get a good start here, you see, before you even start making your cut. So there's, yeah, there's lots of, um, lots and lots of uses for a speed square. There's, oh, it's endless. And I've got quite a few that I can actually share with you, which I'm going to do in another, another couple of videos. I'm going to do another video on cutting rafter, um, rafters, hips, valleys, and commons using one of these, uh, and probably this one even, uh, rafter square. But, I'll, you know, and that'd be, like I say, be a different video. But for this video, it's more of a review, just showing you basics and what you can do with the older rafter square. And it does appear to be square, which is a good, it's a good start. <laughs> um, it's cheap. You know, woodworking doesn't have to be expensive. So if you don't want to get yourself a pricey combination square, because you really need to get a decent one if you're going to get a combination square. These things are cheap, and don't be funny, they are more accurate in many ways, especially if you're going to be lumping them about. So get yourself a speed square like this one. AK okay, rough square, but you know, well, yeah, please boot the old like button because it helps the channel, you know. So, anyway, I just got it in the post and I thought I'd share with you. So, I hope you like my little video. I'll leave a link down below in the description. That I will. Well, have a lovely day. Toodaloo.